The worry, Professor Sahib, is not Nepal or Nepalese. The, the issue is never the uh, Nepal or Nepalese. It's certain leaders, political entities who are influenced by the PLA and CCP and what PLA, CCP or Chinese uh, authorities and the Chinese entity machinations will be. How they will use Nepalese territory to not just further their economic interests, the BRI, but that becomes a strategic issue for us because they will also then be trying to push their troops closer to our borders tacitly or overtly. Yubraj Gibire is with us, a journalist from Nepal. Yubraj ji, namaste. How would you see these namaste. developments? Thank you for your time. Ambassador Prabhudayal, I'll come to you after this sir, for a rounder perspective. Yes, Yubraj ji. Yes, uh, well, uh, if you are you know, if you, if you are raising this issue in the context of recent change of mm. government coalition and entry of the Communist Party of Nepal, unified Marxist Leninist into the ruling coalition, mm. uh, what is uh, what is true is China is the latest entry into Nepal in terms of enhancement in its presence in economic investment. And naturally, uh, when it's a larger economic uh, investment and other interest, then uh, domestic politics with any country would want domestic politics in its favor. Mm. So China, the, in that sense, it has emerged as a, as a competitor with India. But it has come in a context when a political change took place in Nepal way back in 2006. Um, India took the lead role, mobilizing international support, and obviously uh, the Western mm. countries, Western forces were part of it. So that made, I think, that made China more suspicious about in not in. I mean, India's position uh, was always acceptable to China, it seems. But entry of the West, I think, that made China suspicious. That caused to China's growing, uh, you know, presence mm. and economic investment in key areas. Mm. So uh, it, it has led to this kind of situation. And it was very uh, clearly known that the US and India were definitely not wanting the communist parties to come together and work together and rule together. But this happened uh, uh, since, uh, since December 2022. Uh, uh, mm. Nepali Congress and Maoists had formed an alliance and where they were they were ruling the country, but suddenly, uh, President had decided to rope in uh, UML. So th this has become this is seen as a defeat of the uh, US and India uh, coalition mm. uh, or convergence of their interest and seen as a victory of China politically this round. But we really don't know how long. Mm. Ambassador Prabhudyal, would you like to weigh in before we take this forward? Yeah. Well, Anand, first of all, thanks for having me on your show. And you have very correctly in your remarks assessed the security and security related aspects of the problem. Now, as you have pointed out, recent developments in Nepal have uh, highlighted and heightened our concerns about the deepening penetration of China into the Nepalese government and society. There is no doubt that the new leftist regime in Nepal is close to China. Let me also mention that China was perhaps behind the formation of Nepal's new leftist coalition government. Hmm. And it was behind the ouster of the Nepali Congress from the alliance with uh, Nepal's Prime Minister, Mr. Prachanda. Hmm. Now, what is likely to happen is that China will push Nepal to join the BRI on its terms. Now, in fact, there are reports which suggest that Nepal will soon sign the BRI implementation plan with China. Hmm. Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister, who is also the Foreign Minister, Narayan Shrestha, Hmm. returned three days back from a trip to China and he said after his return that the two countries have made progress in moving forward with the implementation plan of the BRI projects in Nepal. Hmm. Now the concern for us is that there is a likelihood of Nepal falling into 
the Chinese debt trap. Hmm. This has happened in the case of Sri Lanka and also Pakistan. So, Chinese influence in Nepal will grow the, uh, as Nepal finds itself deeper and deeper in China's debt. Now, of course, uh, Nepal is trying to say that we should get grants and we don't want loans. But the latest indications are that they are prepared to settle for a combination of grants and loans. And you know what will happen then. The loans will become unrepayable. Nepal will find itself in the classic Chinese debt trap. And then China will use its influence in Nepal to target India. Hmm. As it is, you know, China is spreading a mischievous narrative that India supports corrupt politics in Nepal. Yes. And, oh, and it's trying to damage India's credibility in Nepal. So China's objective is to create an unfavorable environment for India and the region. And naturally, this is a cause of concern for us. India is, of course, committed to the all-out development in Nepal and will give a financial assistance, lines of credit and developmental cooperation. But the Chinese objective is different. They have India in mind when it comes to creating a hostile environment. And I'm afraid that their relationship with Nepal is progressing in that direction. No, but then... Uh